Hello friends, welcome back, this is Dawn. So today we're gonna to be creating with lots of glitter, and I mean lots of glitter. It's the holidays, it is my favorite time to create because it's like anything goes, gloves come off, and the gaudier the better, right? In my last video I went very clean, very simple, modern color palette. Today we're going to the opposite end of the spectrum and we're gonna go, we're gonna flirt with vintage, but in a clean style. So I'm gonna be using the Lovely Layers candy cane here from Honey Bee Stamps, and I've also pulled out their uh, vintage gift card box add-ons. This is the Christmas lights, and then I also pulled out their uh, holiday treats. And then for our sentiments, we're gonna be using the Be Light stamps and dies. Nope, I'm lying, Heart Be Light. Heart Be Light, is that right? Yes, Heart Be Light. So we're going to be using these frames here in the vintage gift card box add-ons. We're not going to be creating gift boxes. We're just going to use some of the elements from these stamp sets because they can be used on their own if you don't want to do 3D treat boxes. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create some colored panels here. So I've pulled out my spray stains. I've got bundled sage, um, forest moss, and a little pumice stone. These all have, well, the two greens are green, of course, but the pumice stone has a green undertone to it. So this is gonna give me a nice mix of greens all on one panel so they don't have a solid color. Now I've wet down a piece of Vicki Booten Foundations cardstock. I really love this mixed media paper. It's 140 pounds, holds up to all of this water and ink beautifully. And I like the um, smooth finish on this. So I've added water, I sprayed my spray stains, add some more water, let them mix and mingle. There is no rhyme or reason for me on this. Um, once I've got some ink down on the paper and it's starting to mix, I'll go ahead and pull out my heat tool and start drying that down. Once that is about 80 to 90% dry, I'll layer on more color. Remember, wet on wet mixes, wet on dry layers. And I want that depth and differentiation of color so that when I cut my elements from here, they're not boring. They're not one, one solid flat color. So you can see here, I'm just drying this down and then I'm gonna start picking up my sprays and just start adding a little bit more here and there. If I need to, I'll add more water to it as well. Again, this is a back and forth until you get it the way you like it. It's gonna look, gonna look horrid, gonna look really bad. <laughs> but once you cut your pieces from it, it'll look great, trust me. I've already done some reds but I needed some more greens. I like to create several of these backgrounds and I keep them in a box so that when I wanna do my die cutting like this, I have a stash to pull from. Now I do want a different green here, so I've pulled another piece of that cardstock, sprayed it with water, and now I'm adding a little salvaged patina with that forest moss. Now here I am going to intentionally move this all around to get these colors to mix. I don't have a ton of the spray stains and I wanted a more vibrant true green. So by mixing that forest moss and that salvaged patina, I'm able to get a different tone, a brighter, more blue green than from the colors of stain that I have. Don't forget your color mixing rules, you guys. If you don't have all of the colors, you don't need them. These are inks, you can mix your colors. Again, just like before, dry this down, continue to layer until I get something that I am happy with. And really, there I say until I'm happy with it, but it's just a crapshoot, you guys. <laughs> All right, so now we have, like I said, I already had some reds created, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more variation to this one red one. And to do that, I'm gonna take uh, Festive Berries here, and I'm gonna use the nozzle of the sprayer to just kind of flick some little splatters there, add a couple of water drops to break up some of that. And then I'll dry this back. So now I, it's not, um, it was, it was good, but I just wanted some more variation in that color, some darker, deep spots. So there we go. All right. And now it's time to cut out our candy cane. Now I have the lovely layers candy cane die over here, and it's got three large layers to build your candy cane. You've got a base layer, and then you've got two layers for the stripes. And this is to allow you to build up you know, whatever type of candy cane you want. You can make it just be standard red and white. You can add a layer of green in there for those more vintage candy canes that are red, white, and green. You can do this in blues, you can do it in yellows. Candy canes come in all different colors. So really you can use two or three of the layers. It is up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and cut me a couple of layers from my reds so that I have some options because at this point, I honestly am not sure where I'm going with this design. 
Uh, this is actually my third card I created in this session. And I do this a lot, you guys. Um, I think a lot of people think you have a vision, a clear vision or what you want to do going into creating something. And that is almost never the case for me. Almost never. So this is actually the third version of this card that I've created in this creative session. And I will share the other two cards with you at the end. But I knew that I wanted to, I wasn't 100% happy with the other cards. They're great, don't get me wrong. They, they're greeting cards, they'll work. But I still was not 100% satisfied. So since I still had everything out, I went ahead and went for version number three. Now here I'm trying to decide, I know I'm gonna do a regular red and white candy cane, so I'm deciding whether I need the two top layers or if I can get away with just one. I do eventually end up using both candy canes. So on one, I use three layers, and then on the other, I just use the two. So for the white layer of the candy cane, I don't want it to be stark white. So I've got a piece of clear acetate here. This is just the top of a stamp sheet. I'm gonna smush some pumice stone onto that and then I'm just going to uh, very lightly dirty up this layer just a bit. It's not huge. It doesn't make a giant difference, but it is still visible. We have all of that ink smushed color blending going on in the background of everything else. And so I didn't want this super clean, pure white. So I'm just gonna use a little water and a paintbrush and I'm gonna add some splatters to the back of this. And then eventually I even pick it up and kind of smush it into that pumice stone. This is the oxide. And I find that the oxide is a bit lighter than the stain. So it's hard to go overboard with this color when you're using it to add just a little bit of depth and dimension to white. And you can see here that it is very subtle, but it's definitely there. All right, to adhere these together, we're gonna to use the My Sweet Petunia Glue Press. This gives me the finest line of glue and the edges of these candy canes are quite thin. So a fine tip applicator is going to be essential to adhere these. If you, for some reason, don't have a fine tip applicator bottle, um, I think Gina Kay has one. The My Sweet Petunia Glue Press is fantastic. I highly recommend it. You could always uh, adhere your cardstock to some stick it or a thin double-sided adhesive sheet, which will essentially turn your cardstock into stickers. So you would apply it before you do your die cutting, then do your die cutting, and then just peel the release paper off of the back, and you could then just adhere all of these layers together. So that's definitely another option. All right, so once I have these all put together, we're gonna die cut our other pieces. And I'm gonna speed this part up because I'm not gonna make you suffer through die cutting. So I'm gonna use the pine branch that's included in here on that more blue-green color. And I did run this back and forth because as I mentioned, this foundations paper from Vicki Booten is 140 pounds. And even with this intricate die, I was able to get a clean cut, you can see there. For the holly that's included in the set, I'm using that deeper green that we created. And the dyes in this is, are absolutely beautiful. They have all of that debossing that you have come to expect from the lovely layers. And of course we have our little berries here. Now I've also created another panel here. This is three by six and I used a little speckled egg spray stain for a very light application. I just barely misted the paper. I just did not want a stark white clean background. So the suggested way to use these dyes is to decorate your little candy cane here with this greenery and then to add a little bow on top, which is also included in the die set. But I didn't, my first two cards I did use it as suggested, but I wanted to do something a little different this time. But before we get there, we need to do some more to this background. So I've grabbed that um, Christmas lights vintage vintage box add-on set. And this has a lot of great images in it that can be used on their own, like I mentioned earlier. Here I'm gonna use the acetate and then this stamp here, which would stamp one of the panels for your vintage gift box. I'm gonna use it to stamp my background here. I'm gonna put it right on this acetate sheet and this way it's flexible and I can control what and where I'm stamping. I don't have to stamp it all down as one image flat. So I can just use the corners to just start stamping around the outer edges of my panel here. I'm gonna take some speckled egg distress ink and I'm gonna ink up the little snowflakes that are in this image. And then I'm gonna use the bundled sage oxide ink to ink up the pine. This is a fun way to get some multicolor without having to be too particular about how you're inking up your stamp. By just using the corner of your stamp pad, you're able to, you know, 
get close enough to inking up what you want to ink up. We're going to spray this with water anyway, so those colors are going to kind of meld. You saw me there, I gave it two quick bursts with my Tim Holtz Distress ink sprayer, and now since this is flexible, I can control what makes contact with the paper. So I'm going to use that corner, and I'm just making sure that that top edge, and I'm keeping the bottom half of that stamp lifted off the paper. I'll do the same thing here at the bottom, holding up that top piece, that top portion, and then just stamping down the bottom portion. Now this is an imperfect stamping, but that's what I'm going for. I want it to look a little distressed. And now I can start to fill in around the edges with whatever's left on the stamp, making sure that I don't put any straight lines, right? So these are corner images. So here you can see, I'm just gonna use this very top piece here, press that in. And then if needed, I can add more ink to this stamp. So you'll see here, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that uh, bundled sage there. And then I can use this to stamp in the corner. And again, because I've got this on that acetate, I can control and only stamp the areas that I wanna stamp. I'm gonna do a slow pull on my distress sprayer, which gives out little droplets of water instead of a big burst of mist. And this is going to put random spots of water onto the image and then kind of blow out some of the image. Allow that ink to reactivate with the water and give a very soft watercolory distressed look. Now I did go much more distressed on this panel than I did on my other two cards, so make sure that you check the end and you'll see I used this stamp again on another version in a much more clean impression, still using the water trick, but I used it in a much more controlled, clean manner. And then I also used the other Holiday Treats vintage uh, add-on stamp set. There's a cute little holly and stripes used for one of the panels. I used that as well on another card. All right, I set that aside to dry and now it's time to add another layer of fun to this background. You didn't think we were done, did you? I'm gonna use the Snowflakes background stencil here. This has two stencils in it. So the first stencil has these large snowflakes on it, which is beautiful. I would love to create a background inking these up in slightly different blues. This would be gorgeous, or even to do one in silver and then one layer in gold, that would be really pretty. So the second layer here has more like circles and little star bursts. So it's more of an abstract snow instead of your actual snowflakes. We're gonna use this more abstract one. Now this panel is three by six inches, so I'm just gonna turn the stencil at a diagonal here and it's gonna cover most of the background and that's fine because I'm not even going to cover the entire background. I'm gonna take this paper texture paste from Prima uh, Finibear and then I'm gonna use the palette knife here to just kind of smear some of this through the stencil in a very irregular pattern. I'm not trying to get perfect, solid, even coverage. Again, we're going for, we're flirting with vintage here. Vintage in a little more clean style. Vintage without brown. <laughs> that's, that's my aesthetic when it comes to vintage. Vintage without brown. It has its places, but mm, I prefer to keep it on the lighter, cleaner side when I do vintage. So you can see here, I'm just, just spreading that on, pulling off the excess, I'll put the excess back in the jar and then I'll take this to the sink immediately and clean it off. You don't want that to dry on there. Before I run off though, I need to pour some glitter on this. I warned you guys already, we were using lots of glitter. I'm using the Rock Candy Distress Glitter. This is by far my favorite Christmas glitter. I'm not a huge fan of the colored glitters. I do love this clear glitter. And when we pour it on this paste here while it's still wet and then we allow it to dry, that glitter will dry stuck to that paste. So we'll set that aside to dry while we funnel the rest of this into our jar and then go clean your stencil, guys. Don't leave it sitting there to dry. This stuff dries pretty fast, so you, you don't have a whole lot of time before it will start to dry on your stencil. And here you can see all of that subtle interest that we've added already to this background. I just love this. All right, so now it is time to start working more on our focal point and I've pulled out the W plus nine modern numerals here. I think that having a good standard set of numbers is a must have in any crafter stash and this is one of my favorite dies. 
So I'm going to cut the 25 out of the red card stock here. And then I've also pulled out another one of our sets. This is our Woodland Basic set. Now the candy cane comes with a set of berries. There are three attached berries, but I really wanted three. I wanted separate berries. So I've used our Woodland Basics die here and I've die cut these little wonky berries. I thought that they matched the um, playful shape of the candy cane perfectly. And the intended berries are great, but I just, again, wanted to sprinkle these throughout the design. And now it is time for the fun part. Glitter, glitter, and more glitter. So I'm gonna use the Distress Frosted Crystal and the Distress Glitter in Clear Rock Candy. This is a little tip, a little trick that I picked up from Tim. The man costs me so much money, you guys, so much money. <laughs> but he showed us this trick with stamped images and I thought why not do it with die cuts so I'm going to push my candy cane into a Versamark pad here and then I'm going to cover it with the distress frosted crystal and then we're going to heat set this now normally what this does is it can change shiny um uh, what's the word I'm thinking of like ephemera that has a shine to it. You can lay this over it, heat set it, and it goes matte, but with this uh, crystal look, almost like a frosted glass look. If you heat it longer, it will go from matte to shiny, and then it becomes sticky. So we're gonna overheat this frosted crystal, and then we are immediately going to pour on that distress glitter. And once we do this, that Distress Glitter is now going to stick to everywhere that the Frosted Crystal was. Again, it's a really cool technique. He showed us doing it with stamped images, but again, I was like, die cuts, this will work perfect for die cuts. I'm gonna flip off the, or flick off the ends. The, I have tried to voice this part over like four times, you guys. I kept calling Frosted Crystal, Frosted Crystal. I'm not starting over. So flick off the excess glitter. <laughs> And then here you can see I made a mistake. I was supposed to heat this again. Now, a lot of the glitter did stay, but I, this is a good one. I'm going to keep it in because I'm going to show you this up close and you're going to see we have, we have glitter stuck to it, but we don't have an abundance of glitter stuck to it. This is a nice look too, right? Um, some of the glitter stuck, but not, a, not all of it. And this is really beautiful if you just want some subtle glitter. Now in the next portion, I remember, oh yeah, that's right. I gotta do a second heating. So here we go. All right, I'm gonna push the second half of that candy cane into the Versamark again. We're gonna pour on that uh, frosted crystal, tap off the excess. We're gonna funnel that back into the jar because we're gonna need this sheet of paper for our glitter. And we're gonna wanna be quick with applying our glitter. So we'll go ahead and funnel that back now we're gonna melt our frosted crystal. Remember, it's gonna go matte. We're gonna heat it until it goes from matte to shiny. Then we're gonna pour that glitter on. And I like to let it sit there for just a second. Kinda let it cool off into the, uh, into the frosted crystal there. Then we're gonna dump our, ex our excess and now I'm gonna heat it again. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna reheat that frosted crystal and melt the, um, it's gonna reheat it, make it sticky again, and it's going to make more of that glitter adhere. And here, you'll see, I'll, sh I'll pull it up to you after I, I like to go ahead and rub off any excess glitter that may fall off, just so that the recipient doesn't receive a glitter bomb. So I kind of go over it and here you'll be able to see the difference between the top and the bottom. The top has a lot less glitter than the bottom. And please tell me I showed you guys. No, I did not. I reheated it. Darn it. You can see it here. You can kind of see how where my thumbnail is. It's got much more glitter than the top half did. Darn it. I am so upset with myself right now. I should have left that in. <laughs> but here you can see I just reheated it, put more glitter on it. Now I'm gonna reheat it again, and now the top half is gonna match the bottom half. Darn, I'm so upset with myself. <laughs> That's what I get. That's what I get. Ah, but here, now you can see there's a lot more glitter on it now than there was previously. And again, it's that second heating. That second heating is key because it reheats that powder and allows that glitter to bond to that powder and cool into it. 
And you can see here just how shimmery, how sugar-coated these look. I love, love, love this technique. Just another thing that Tim has taught me that I will now never let go from my creative arsenal. Look at that. It looks like sugar, doesn't it? Ah, so, so pretty. In fact, I loved it so much that I did the same thing to my, my numbers here, the 25. Um, I sewed these on and added some sewing around the edges of these and then added some of that glitter with the frosted crystal and the rock candy. I would have glittered all of these too, but I decided uh, rain it in, Dawn, rain it in. So instead we're going to use the white puff powder because that's another one of my all-time favorites, you guys. Y'all know there's certain things that come out every Christmas. Um, I've posted this before. It is that paper paste, the white puff powder, and the rock candy glitter every Christmas without fail. That's my time to, I mean, give these guys a workout. So I'm going to dip the die cuts into my Versamark just randomly. I don't want to cover the whole thing. We're going to sprinkle this embossing powder over the top, and then we're going to knock off the excess. You can see here, if you got too much uh, to have a, a solid line or something like that, just use your finger, brush it away. We want a dusting of snow. We don't want to cover up all of the color. We just want some snow that's fallen and is staying on the high points. That's what we're going for. So we will melt that. And as you melt this powder, it puffs up like snow. And like the, the name indicates, white puff powder or powder puff white, or I'll have it linked below. I can't remember the order. <laughs> All of the supplies used in today's video will be linked below. So if you're looking for anything, make sure you check there in the description box. And I'm going to do the same thing for each of my uh, little floral elements here. Just kind of haphazardly dip them into the verse mark and then apply some of that white puff powder. Now for the smaller elements, I'll use my tweezers and then I will use the distress embossing pin to just target a little bit of embossing powder there. That way I don't have to knock off so much. I can control exactly where that verse mark goes by using an embossing pin. All right, and with all of my elements created, I can now move on to creating my focal point here. Now, I know I didn't want to use it the same way I had used it in the previous two cards, which was to take one each of those uh, little floral pieces, group them together, put them on top of the candy cane, and then just add the bow. This time I wanted to create a larger arrangement, kind of in the background, and then just have the candy cane accenting those. So I'm gonna create just a little, just a little floral swag in the background with the candy cane off to the right side. So I've started by creating almost a semicircle with my greenery here. And I'm doing something that I rarely ever do, you guys. I'm adhering as I go. So I've adhered my candy cane in those back layers of pine. And then once I get the other layers where I'm happy with them, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere them using uh, a mix of liquid adhesive and foam tape. I do really wish that I would not have adhered this as I went because there were some times I wanted to make some changes, but I tried something different. I'm gonna stick with my original method of creating my arrangement and then picking it up with press and seal. It just works the best for me. You can see here, I'm having to move some of my foam adhesive. I'm having to take some things up and uh, it just, the press and seal trick works best for me, you guys. It just does. So I've already cut and I've already stamped and cut my sentiment there. That's the have yourself a merry little Christmas. And again, that's from the Heart Be Light stamp and die set. These are full of great, just small sentiments that are perfect for adding kind of an accent when you don't want the sentiment itself to be the main focal point. It just supports all of this cute. It just supports this glitter, man. That's all I care about, the glitter on this card. <laughs> that glitter just gets me. I love it so much. Now I'm adding in some more foam tape for stability. And then this will pretty much finish out all of our main image. I did die cut the bow, which is included in our candy cane set. Um, die cut that from a piece of card, the leftover cardstock from our background. So it's got that same light speckled egg. And then here is the finished panel there. And now it's just time to finish out our card base. I'm gonna create a mat from craft cardstock and I'm gonna run this through my Fisker's paper crimper. Now this, I've had probably at least 20 years, you guys, and I have not been able to find it anywhere. eBay, I think I saw a couple on eBay, but I haven't been able to find the Fisker's one. I don't think they still make it, but I was able to find a Marvy Yukita one on Amazon. So you might wanna check there. I think I also saw maybe one at Joann's. Uh, if you're looking for one, I would check for the Marvy Yukita one. 
it has a ton of uses. That paper crimper, like I said, I don't use it every day. I don't even use it every month, but I use it every year and it is just a great little tool to have in your arsenal. So this is one of our mats and I decided to try to mat it with some pattern paper. I pulled out the Holiday Wishes paper pad and just kind of flipped through to see if anything was jumping out at me. And right away, these little candy cane stripes I thought would be perfect to add as an additional mat with this craft. And just to be sure, I did flip through the rest of the pad just to make sure that nothing else jumped out at me. And there were a couple of other good contenders, but ultimately that candy cane stripe won out. I just adhered both of these mats directly to each other using a little bit of liquid adhesive and centering them. Now for the card base, I just added one little special touch. I decided that I wanted to hang some little bells from this card. And instead of looping the twine all the way through the fold of the card, I, I'm going to actually just punch some holes here and loop it through the upper area here. So see, instead of going through the fold, I'm just going to punch some holes and, and uh, loop it through. You'll see what I'm saying. So I've got my crop dial here and I'm gonna just gonna punch two holes and then I'm gonna take that baker's twine and I'm going to thread it through each of the holes. So I'm gonna thread one end through one hole, then I'm gonna take that second end there and thread it through the other. So then I, now all I have to do is pull them together and tie a bow. And you can tie your bow as big or as little as you want to. I just made like a medium sized bow. Now this is a special extra little detail that you could totally leave off. And um, no, this is not going to fit into a regular envelope because we are going to attach some bells to the ends of our little bow here because jingle bells, right? It's Christmas. And to do that, I'm just going to, again, thread our twine through the top of the bell and then just tie a little knot. Now, again, like I said, this is optional. This is not going to fit into an envelope in mail, obviously, <laughs> but it will be, it can get mailed the same way 99.9% .9 of my cards would get mailed and that's in a padded envelope. Or you could put this into a gift basket uh, for the holidays. I think that that would be super cute. You wouldn't need an envelope for it. Just tuck it into a gift basket. So there's a lot of different things that you can use these types of cards for even if you don't plan to mail them and having those little bells on it oh my goodness it's just so cute and it adds a little extra something something all right so let's take a look at all of our finished cards okay so here is the one that we just created together I am so happy that I decided to do a third version and like I said the other two cards are still beautiful in their own right they're they're greeting cards but this one turned out I, I love this one I'm so proud of it all that glitter is blowing out my whites. I apologize, but here up closer, you're able to really see all of that detail. We've got that watercolor stamping in the background, which is the perfect backdrop for this greenery. We've got some stenciling going on in the background. A Little bit of glitter ties that glittered candy cane in with the background. We've got that fake snow on our greenery, little stitching, that pattern paper is the perfect accent for our candy cane there in the foreground. And then that craft, that craft is just that beautiful neutral that kind of grounds it all and gives it a little bit more of a rustic look. But I love that the outer the outer mats are clean and it contrasts nicely with our, our nod to vintage there in the foreground. With our leftover candy cane, I went ahead and made a little tag. This would be cute to hang on a present that accompanies the card. And here is the simple use of the greenery just to decorate the candy cane. All right, so let's take a look at the first two cards. They're still great cards. They're just weren't quite, they, I wasn't quite in love with them. So here's the first one. For this one, I chose to do that green and red candy cane. And I inked the edges with a little bit of brown, which is where I think maybe went a little wrong for me. I did that same stamping in the background with the, uh, the vintage add-on box. This one was the Christmas lights. Again, added that paste in the background. These are all elements that I carried over eventually to our final card. This little tag, I love that. That is from the Lovely Layers Dove, and I'll have to incorporate that into another design. I also reused the craft background and the pattern paper idea. This led me to the second card where I decided that I really liked the red and white candy cane. And this time I paired it with the Holiday Treats uh, vintage gift card add-on box. And I did the same treatment in the background. 
So between this card and the green card, I took all of the elements that I liked from each. This one's a little bit cleaner. I didn't ink with any brown. I kept all of the background treatment from the first card and the pattern paper and the craft, and I applied that to my final design. So in conclusion, we don't always come up with our master idea right out of the gate. Sometimes we gotta keep trying a couple iterations. So don't be afraid to try several things Keep the things you like, drop the things you don't, especially when it comes to techniques. When you see people use techniques, you don't have to use them exactly like they used them. Take little nuggets from the technique and apply it to where it fits your style. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you're looking for any of the supplies, they'll be linked in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my next video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. All right, y'all, that's it for me. I will see you in the next video. Bye.